Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to see how to install Event GVM using VMware Workstation Player. Also, I am going to save all the EVNG files inside external hard drive instead of storing in local PC storage. The procedure is almost same whether you are choosing local storage or external hard disk drive. First of all, we need to download the EVNG file from the EVNG website. So go to google.com and search for download EVNG. In the, from the first link, you can see download EVNG. Click on it. It will take you to this page. Here you can see the download links. You can see EVNG Professional and EVNG Community Editions. For this video, I am to, I am going to download EVNG Community Edition. So click on it, it will take you to this page. Here you can see the two versions of EVNG files. One is OVF, the another one is ISO. For this video, I am using OVF file. I already downloaded. You can see the below link and download it. I already kept it inside the, my downloads directory. Now let us start the installation by opening VMware Obsession Player. From the player drop down list, go to file and click open. Go to the directory where you have downloaded the EVNG OVF file. Click on it and click open. Here we have to give the name for the new virtual machine. I'll give EVNG. And this is the storage path. For the new virtual machine, this is a default storage path. But for this video, I am going to save it on the external hard drive. My external hard drive is drive D. So click on browse. This is my external hard drive, drive D. Here I have already created one folder named EVNG. So I am going to save all the files in this folder. So click on EVNG, click OK. Now click on import. Now it is installing the new virtual machine. Here we can see the new virtual machine is created. Please check the hardware requirements from the EVNG documentation page. Here we can see PC and laptop hardware requirements. Here 8 GB RAM and 40 GB hard disk space for our PC and laptop and for EVNG virtual machine we need minimum 6 GB RAM and hard disk space is 40 GB. Before power on EVNG virtual machine we have to edit some virtual machine settings. So click on edit virtual machine settings. Here we can see under hardware Memory is 8 GB. I have selected 8 GB RAM and processor, four, four processors. Minimum we have to use two processors. And please check the virtualization engine. Uh, the checkbox is selected. This virtualize Intel VTX, EPT, or AMD. This should be selected. And hard disk 50 GB. Based on your uh, system requirement, you can choose that. And network adapter, it's a bridge connection. Uh, if your system is connected with physical network, you can choose the bridge connection. Otherwise, if it is laptop or any wireless connections, you can use NAT connection. Click OK. Now we can power on the virtual machine by clicking on this play virtual machine. Now the virtual machine is loading. Now on the terminal, we can see the default login credentials. Default username is root and password is eve. And it got the IP address from my local area network through DHCP. The IP address is 192.168.1.206. 
as a font is very small, I'm going to use party terminal now. Now let me open the party terminal. Here connection type, I'll choose SSH and we have to type our IP address here. Our IP address is 192.168.1.206 and port number is 22. Now click open. In this pop-up window, it is asking for accept the SSH keys fingerprint. So we have to accept this for first, first time when we are using PuTTY. Now we have to log in. Our username is root. Default username is root. And our password is e. Now we are inside even the setup mode. First we have to type the root password. And we have to repeat the root password here. E. Next, host name. Host name here it is ENG. I will leave it as default. And next, DNS domain name. That also I will leave it as default. And next, we have to select DHCP or static IP address. I will go with static IP address. I will use the down arrow to select static. Now I will use my spacebar to select that and click OK. The next, management network IP address. Here I am going to give my static IP address 192.168.1.50. This is my static IP address and subnet mask 255.255.255.255. Next, default gateway 192.168.1.1. This is my router's ESP router's IP address. And primary DNS server IP address, I'll use the same IP address 168.1.1.1. And secondary DNS server, I'll use Google DNS server IP address 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. NTP server. We are not using so I will leave it as blank and proxy server will use direct connection click OK. Now we can see our ENG VM is rebooting. Now our even GVM is restarted. I'm going to open new session from Putty. Connection type SSH and IP address. We have to give the newly assigned IP address 192.168.1.50 and port number is 22 and click open. It is once again asking for the Acceptance of security keys, click accept. Login as root, password E. Now we will check our IP address using this command, ifconfig. Here we can see our IP address, 192.168.1.50. This is our newly assigned IP address under PNET0 interface. So far, we have completed the installation part of UNGVM. Now we will start using UNG Lab. To access our UNG Lab, we have to open any web browser. Type the IP address of UNGVM. Our IP address is 192.168.1.50. This is the even web login page. Here, our default username is admin and password is Eve. And here we have two types of console native and HTML5. For this video, I am going to use HTML5 console and click sign in. Now we have to create new lab. So click here to add new lab. Lab name, I'll give new lab one. 
and click save. This is the blank workspace. Now we have to add devices or node to this topology. To add new nodes, right click and select node. Here we can see the list of nodes. These nodes are not, devices are not enabled. So oh, it means it is not added to the event GVM. In my previous video, I have shown how to add Cisco devices to event GVM. Suppose if you want to know how to add any new devices to event GVM, you can refer that video. I have given the link in the description. I'll scroll down further. Here we can see this virtual PC. This is in blue color. This is enabled by default. So for the lab purpose, I will use this virtual PC. Click on that. And number of nodes, I'll use two. And click save. Now we have to connect these devices. These interfaces, I will leave it as default. Click save. Now I will select the two devices and click right click. We have to start these devices now. Start selected. The right side we can see the devices are, devices are started. Okay. Now we have to open the console for two, both the devices. Uh, first I will open the VPC1 device. It is open. Now I will add the IP address to the VPC1 IP 10.1.1.1 and subnet mask I will view 24. Now I will check this IP address by show IP. It is created. The same way we will open VPC2. Now we will assign IP addresses to VPC2, IP 10.1.1.2, subnet mask 24. So it is created. Now we can check the connectivity between these two devices by using ping command. First, I will start from VPC1. I'll go to VPC1. Now I am in VPC1 console. So I'll use the ping command. We will use the command 10.1.1. So this is IP address of VPC2. So we are checking from VPC1 to VPC2. Yeah, it is getting the reply from VPC2. The same way I will go to VPC2. I'll use ping command and type the IP address of VPC1. 10.1.1.1. Here we can see that it is getting replay from VPC1. So both the devices are working. The connectivity is fine. So far, we have seen how to install even GVM using VMware Workstation Player inside external hard drive. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel.